There's four main modes in Tower Defense Simulator, Normal Mode, Molten Mode, Fallen Mode, and Hardcore Mode. The first three I mentioned, which were Normal, Molten, and Fallen Mode, are all pretty easy. Normal Mode, being the first one, illogically happens to also not be the easiest mode. The easiest mode happens to be Molten Mode. And obviously, the hardest out of the three is Fallen Mode. Now, these modes are really easy. You could solo any map on any one of these modes, with the exception of Alebi and Badlands on Fallen, and it wouldn't be that big of a challenge. All you need is some good RNG, good towers, and you should be able to do it. Even a level 30 could beat Fallen if they have the right towers. But then there is Hardcore Mode. After this update, the commander was nerfed. He no longer more than doubles the fire rate of the towers, which is what he used to do in the old version of TDS, but instead, he now only buffs our towers by 55%. The rate of fire bug also got fixed, and the map wrecked battlefields got changed. With all of these changes now, hardcore has been impossible for, well, a few days. After some of the bugs got fixed, and some of the best players started grinding this mode, it became apparent that a few people were indeed able to beat it. This mode is so much harder than anything in Tower Defense Simulator. This mode is harder than Hidden Wave, any event, or any mode ever was. Where even some of the best players in the game and the most organized teams are still unable to beat this mode. So that's exactly what I did today. And this is how I beat Hardcore Mode. Alright, so meet my teammates. I will be doing this mode with a content creator named Mario, and then also Wikia Colors, who will not be using admin commands here. We all spawn in and immediately get to work. I have farm, military base, gold minigunner, accelerator, and DJ. Mario has farm, military base, gold minigunner, accelerator, and commander, while Wikia has farm, ace pilot, medic, ranger, and accelerator. We start by skipping the early game waves to place down an ace pilot, and then to upgrade it to level 2. We're gonna tank some health, but that's not a big problem, we kinda have to. Wikia ends up accidentally placing a farm, and at this point of the run I was thinking, you know what, it's just a dumb mistake, we're gonna have to reset. Little did I know this was the very run we were gonna beat hardcore, so I'm glad I stuck through with it. We end up getting the level 2 ace pilot, which does drop some bombs on the hefties. Me and Mario finally were done farming and we were ready to place our military bases. After that, some balloons came out and we were able to pop all of the balloons without a problem. Our health was looking kind of low, but luckily none of the other waves except for wave 17 were going to be a threat because wave 17 is mystery spam, and we all know mysteries equal bad RNG. Our RNG wasn't great, we got two lead bosses, so just to be safe I decided to get a military base early. I was gonna need to get five military bases anyways for the mega slow that was gonna come out in the next wave. Knowing that, I decided to take a risk and upgrade my farm. I didn't know if I would have enough money for two military bases next wave, but thankfully I did, except I couldn't afford a level 2 military base on the slow boss wave. But that wasn't going to matter too much since, as soon as the military bases on the map rammed into the enemies, I would just get some money and I'd be able to upgrade it. The mega slow got pretty far and we used an ace in the back to deal some extra damage, but with 10 military bases, we were able to take it down without much of a problem. At this point, Wikia was farming in some very interesting patterns and this is going to be important for late game, when enemies are going to try and stun the towers later on, because the farms are going to be the closest towers to the enemies, they're going to end up trying to stun the farms, and as we all know, farms don't do damage, so that's not like it mattered. So that's a really smart play, and if you ever want to triumph hardcore, make sure to follow that farm placement. We then got some gold minigunners, since we were going to need some damage for the shadow boss, which was coming out really soon, let alone the three shadow bosses on wave 25, which is one of the most feared waves in hardcore. Our first shadow boss was not that much of a problem. With two gold minigunners and 10 military bases, we were able to destroy it like it was nothing. I noticed I had a lot of cash and I didn't need to get a level 3 gold mini until wave 25, so I decided to upgrade my farms. Mario got scared because he thought I had no money for the gold mini upgrade, but I got the gold mini upgrade anyways. Wikia then got an accelerator, and we were prepared for wave 25. Luckily, I had enough money for a DJ, and we also had enough money for a commander, so we were going to have some extra damage to deal to those shadow bosses. And even with all that defense, the shadow bosses punched through pretty far back. 
Now that that was done, everything else seemed to be smooth sailing. Wave 27 with all the fallen rushers wasn't that big of a problem either. Two level 3 minigunners do incredible amounts of damage. Plus, Mario decided to use the commander's ability a wave early, since the next wave would be exactly like this except with more fallen rushers. Either way, we survived that as well, and I was just working on a max DJ now. After getting the max DJ, it was time for me to get an accelerator. Without the rate of fire bug, accelerators do absolutely massive amounts of damage. Then we had the fallen titan come out and show off his old shield, which honestly was a really cool looking shield. And he did try to stun a few farms as well, which is why the placement comes in handy. After easily taking him down, we had more shadow bosses, which didn't get us far this time, which is a good thing to see. And then we had everybody's favorite mystery bosses come out, but because our defense was strong, no matter what they spawned we could have defeated. After a few more boring simple waves, we were at the Grave Digger. I sold my golden mini because Mario told me to, even though I didn't really need to. After that, I got a max accelerator which was going to do a crap ton of damage to the Grave Digger. After stomping and somehow stunning the accelerators which were on a cliff, the Grave Digger proceeded to be a hypocrite and die while we just kept building up our defenses in the front. We saw some lavas which were just molten's but more red, and then we encountered some balloons which make even less sense than they already do. Thanks to our rangers, we took them down and kept spawn camping most of the enemies. On wave 41, Commander gets shocked that it's wave 41, and then we see some slow kings which are not slow at all. I proceed to play some loud annoying music. after which I just turn it off entirely. On wave 43, we see our first circuit here, which boosts himself in one error and then dies shortly after. We then get some speedy kings, which turn the slow kings into normal kings apparently because they're no longer slow, but we kill them just as easily as we kill everything else. Wave 44 rolled around and now we had a bunch of free money available to us. The molten boss is barely able to make it to the second turn before he's killed, and in a last effort, he spawns some enemies which just gives us some extra money. We then get a Templar which would have been a problem if it was 2020, but then he disappoints all the Templar fans by dying within a few seconds of spawning. Oh, and did I mention the cool music starts to play? On wave 45, we get some of these guys, who for some reason get really angry and try to beat up the farms, but they just end up wasting their time and dying. Except one of these managed to get a hit on this poor accelerator here, who now was attacking 150% slower. But yeah, you know, that's just a normal reaction to getting hit by a 2,000 pound massive sharp void axe. I spent an awfully long amount of time here trying to decide where to place this accelerator. So I then decide on this spot, I place it there, max it out, and world hunger is solved. Then we get this necromancer boss, which looks too suspiciously similar to a necromancer boss from a different game. Wonder what I could be talking about. I then get Get this dreaded message here so I decide to place golden minigunners and also end up completely forgetting that I have military bases at the back which are completely unupgraded. The fallen swordmaster comes out but because we have like 16 accelerators up at the front ready to lock onto him he gets roasted to death by their lasers and in a last stand he creates a bunch of cones around the map stunning our towers which is extremely dangerous seeing as by the time the next wave starts all the towers will already have been unstunned. I then get some orders from General Mario so I start placing my towers only to find out that Wikia was in my way so I had to politely threaten him to move out of the way and I continued doing my business. It was now Fallen King's time to shine. He regrets his decision of existing because he gets shredded in no time. Now I'm sitting here with a bunch of money I don't know what to do, what would anybody do in this situation? Clearly upgrade their military bases which were still riding down the map as level 2. But I didn't even notice and then we had a Vindicator who did his job really well and stunned the farms that weren't even doing damage. Wikia started selling all of his farms to place them right back which honestly if you didn't know is a really good tactic. It's really difficult to explain but if you know then you know. I then turned off the music but it's not like it matters because you can't hear it right now anyways since I'm putting a different song over the video. The Void Reaver spawns in and immediately throws a tantrum, which is then countered by a medic's ability and all of our towers are now unstunned. The Void Reaver suddenly realizes there's a bunch of accelerators focusing on him, so he gets scared and calls for his brother. Then he stuns a farm and his brother proceeds to throw a tantrum. Again, stunning the accelerators on a cliff which somehow shouldn't even be able to get stunned. He then notices that the accelerators hurt so he decides to retaliate by throwing his sword at our base. Luckily his dumb sword only does 80 damage which is less than a boss which makes absolute sense. You have a massive sword carried by this otherworldly void creature 
and it doesn't even do as much damage as a boss going into your base. He then realizes it's a good idea to run because he could get to the end faster, but it took him a little bit long to realize that, so he ends up dying as a consequence. And this is why, kids, if you ever see a bunch of accelerators about to annihilate you, you better run. I move my DJ to the back and start microing my towers. The second Void Reaver was getting out of range, but then I had a problem. I ran out of money. All of the money that I got from the other Void Reaver, well, I wasn't gonna get it until he disappeared, because he was too busy sitting there and slowly fading away. Even after he disappeared, I still wasn't getting my money. Seems like he's taking some inspiration from Tower Defense's updates and delaying his payment. I got my paycheck and I started spamming a bunch of my towers to finish off the second Void Reaver. Then he died. I said it was easy, Mario was freaking out, it's like 10pm as I'm reading this and I still have to edit this for like 2 hours, so yeah, like and subscribe, goodbye.